So this is goodbye to my last hotel at the Giro d'Italia. On the way to the time trial, we're gonna smash it out. We've got all my gear. We got Tosh at the car. He's waiting for me. He starts four minutes behind me. We got the Giro. Look at him, he's happy. We're all happy. Super happy. Super happy it's over. So, it's rock and roll. Whoa. I'm in the front. Whoa. I know my place. No, she's the place. Yeah, I know my place also. I'm gonna miss this hotel. <laughs> I have to go back and live in a house. My own bed, my own <laughs> kitchen, my own food. <laughs> Tosh and I leave later than the other cyclists. The idea of this is we all start different times, so there's no point in us getting there so early and just hanging around the bus for four or five hours. So we left at two o'clock, everyone's already set up, and we just arrived just about one and a half hours before. Now I'm doing cruisy warm up, I'm not taking it serious today. Just, you know, just don't have a bit of a shock to the body and me, my beautiful self. Looking good. You need something on the start? Extra, jowl, or water? I have always water with you. Energy drink. About 10 minutes before our designated start, the cyclists leave to the start area. It's normally about a K there, sometimes it's super close. As you see, you see the team cars getting ready that are servicing the riders. Normally they uh, line up in order, so you get to see here that all the, all the cars are in orders, same order the riders are head off, and this is the start area. So here on the left you'll see the start ramp, you see the commentator talking about the riders and everything, and we hide at the back and just ready to go. But before we start, we get a UCI bike check, so I'm, um, you know, next in line. You see the guy in front of me? He gets his bike checked. They, they check to see if the seat is more than five centimeters beyond the bottom bracket, which is one of the regulations, and they make sure that their handlebar extensions are not 85 centimeters in front of the bottom bracket. So you don't have that Superman position they had before. So my bike gets checked. Normally they do a weight check also, but it's a flat course and weight's not so important. And to be fair, not many TT bikes are at 6.8 kilos. This is not really worth it. Now another UCI official here has got this magical iPad that's measuring magnetic waves to see if I have a motor in the bike. I wish I had a motor in the bike, but if I did have a motor in the bike, I would make a magnetless motor so I'd never detect it. No, nah, just kidding. I wouldn't do that. We basically sit here and start the race. So the race is done and... Sure. <laughs> He's a good guy, this one. So I do a bit of nonsense talk here and I'm just, uh, yeah, riding back to the, the start here. I don't really know where it is, but I'm just trying to follow who I can see and hopefully it's the right way. Cruising back to the bus. Wherever that is, I've got no idea. Instructions are not very well placed. Signs. I see arena over there, so I'll just follow that. I heard Victor was second. Some more guys to go. Interesting to see what he says. It's like a change of shape. Uh, I see a few team cars in front of me. I'm assuming. I'm going the other way. So, like I said, just follow anyone you can see and hope you get the right way to the start. So I'm at the ticket counter and I got the excess luggage because I'm um, five kilos over. Too many goodies in my suitcase. So 
I wonder what this is going to cost. But, not the first time, that's for sure. Actually, the funny thing is, with my suitcase, let's check this out, this is it, right? So I'm trying to fit everything in there, because we get a lot of stuff extra to, um, by the team. And uh, Stuart O'Grady comes around, hey, you want to help? And he, I said, yeah, can you sit on it? So I had Stuart O'Grady, Stuart O'Grady, sit on my suitcase, trying to fit everything in. And I swear I was going to explode, so that's why I wrapped it with um, that cling wrap that you do at the airport. Normally I don't do that, because uh, Samsonite suitcases are really good, but um, I don't trust that my suitcase will stay closed. I think it'll break open. So that's why I put the cling wrap on, and now I'm just... Um, waiting in line to pay for my excess luggage and I get to go home. Yeah. Greetings, just landed in Vienna. The plane was delayed by um, an hour and a half. So it's, uh, I think it's 12, 12.35 here. Just waiting for my bag. Drive to Czech Republic, get to go through Slovakia, so I'm in Austria at the moment, Vienna. And hopefully, I'll be home in my bed at 3 a.m. with a nice sleeping. It's pretty incredible. Just over nine hours ago, we were doing the last stage of the Giro d'Italia. Number 25 finished, not bad. Started in 28. Just read on Twitter the record is. 28 finished. <laughs> it's within reach. 28 is within reach. I have to uh, have a think about that. So for now, I'll just wait until my bag arrives and then um, home sweet home. So my suitcase has made it and I'm super happy. Pretty lucky. Last time I landed here, my suitcase didn't arrive. So I'm a happy, happy chap. On the way home, home sweet home, no place like home sweet home. Sit there. I'm dead, but found big and ice cream. Should go have some coffee. And this is my treat for finishing the Giro. <laughs>